A lot of new stuff is coming with the 1.3 patch and I'm not just talking about the things that I already mentioned in my previous video where I laid down what is coming and what to expect from the 1.3 patch. But right now we uh, have the patch notes and the special report just finished up as well giving us both a lot of new information and also some new footage. So I know why you're here, let's not waste any time and let's get this thing going. Before anything, I want to start off with the gear sets. I know that we've already talked about these and what they do, so I will not tell you the effects of each of these, you already know that. But um, in my previous video about the 1.3 patch, I, um, I told you guys that I was kind of worried about the, the state of the Dark Zone. More specifically, when talking about the Firecrest and the Reclaimer gear set in particular. But I've got some good news because it's been confirmed that uh, the consumables themselves... They are going to be nerfed. First up, the explosive bullets. The explosion that the explosive bullets do, they will always do the exact same damage as the bullet that impacted the player and not anymore. And the fire bullets will now only last for 30% of the original duration. And with the duration, I'm not just talking about that they run out faster, uh, but the fire effect that is applied from the fire bullets itself, that will also last 30% of the original duration. Now, not only was this nerf introduced, but the players will also be able to get the older gear sets and the gear sets from the 1.2 patch with 268 gear score, meaning that if you play Falcon Lost on, for example, the heroic difficulty, you will get Tactician's Striker or Sentry 268 gear score as a reward for completing it. Now, these two things combined, the fact that consumables have been nerfed and the fact that you can still get the older gear sets with a higher gear score, those two make it so that uh, people without the DLC will still be able to gear up properly and will not be put at a disadvantage in a dark zone. I'm very happy with this because obviously now the game doesn't become a pay to win scenario. And I can still go for the gear sets that I like and I don't have to be forced to play with the newer ones. I will probably keep building up my toughness up to uh, 700,000 and get my tactician build perfected. Or maybe I'll get myself a nice 5 piece striker with the reckless. I want to try that out as well. Now when talking about the gear it's impossible to avoid the nerfs that are coming to both strikers and sentry. Uh, but I'm going to talk about those soon. First, I want to talk about some of the major changes that have been made to how many mod slots you can have per item. Because they're moving it around. The new rules will be is that chess pieces will now always have two mod slots. Masks will always have one mod slot. Knee pads and backpacks will also only have one mod slot. And gloves and holsters will both have zero mod slots. This is going to count for every item that you can find in the world. This means that you will never see a chess piece without a mod slot anymore. But on the contrary, you will also not be able to reroll any additional mod slots. Mod slots will now be a fixed amount, so to speak. They're not part of those major attributes anymore. Oh, and uh, holsters will now also always have three main stats. So no more two stat holsters. I know a lot of you are going to be happy about that. But to get back to the mod slots just a little bit, uh, you all know that if you want to get mod slots on your gear, you usually have to give up major attributes, which is not always desirable, especially if those major attributes are rolled in very high amounts, such as skill, power, or armor, right? I mean, that's what we learned in my best in slot video. But for example, with two mod slots on the chest, you would only have room for one major attribute, um, with the old rules at least. But looking at this footage and looking at uh, the newer chest pieces, which all have two mod slots, by the way, you can see that the newer chest pieces also always have two major attributes. So these new chests are better in general and they have the potential to be a lot more powerful than any of the pre-patch gear items, even if you manage to get the exact same thing. Now what I'm wondering is if they also changed up the values on some of these, uh, on these major attributes, because if that's the case, then I would of course have to make another best in slot guide video for the 1.3 patch as, you know, skill power might not be the best anymore. We'll have to wait and see for that. Um, aside from the gear sets, they also showed some new weapons, including the shotgun, which radical gets tighter the more bullets are out of the magazine. Then you have the PP90 SMG with a 100 bullet magazine. And although both of these weapons, they may seem very cool, what I'm really interested in is the weapon talent recalibration. The first footage shows us that if you want to recalibrate a weapon, you're going to have to pay with Phoenix credits. But aside from that, you will also have to pay with special weapon toolkits. Now... They explained on the stream that weapon toolkits are another new form of currency specifically made to pay for these weapon talent rerolls. Rerolling weapon talents works exactly the same as rerolling gear stats. Uh, you pay the amount that it costs and then you get four random options that the game decides for you. You pick one and uh, if that wasn't a talent, you're gonna have to go and give it another try. I did notice though on the stream that there is a limit of how many times you can reroll that weapon. It says six rolls remaining on a brand new gun. 
Unfortunately, this was something that wasn't spoken about on the stream, but uh, with so many different talents and only, you know, six options, six tries, I'm a bit afraid that uh, for a lot of the weapons that you get, this will still not quite cut it. But I guess it isn't what it's supposed to be, right? It's not supposed to be your all-in-one answer. Let's just see how this works out. I'm actually very happy that they implemented this in the first place, as this is something that people have been asking for forever. Now, before I move away from the new gear sets, uh, like I said, I still feel like I have to mention the nerf to the strikers and the sentries. Um, basically, what they've done is they've taken some stats from the two and the three pieces and put those into a new five set bonus. Uh, Sentry Skull 2 and 3 piece will now instead give you 10% headshot bonus and 10% damage to elites. And then the 5 set will add the additional 20% headshot damage and another 10% to elites to match what you originally would have had with a 3 piece set. And the same goes for Striker really. Right now you can get 10% enemy armor damage on the 2 piece and 20% critical hit damage on the 3 piece. And then the 5 piece gives you that other 10% armor damage and the 30% critical hit damage that you would have had with a 3 piece bonus right now. And I kind of know that you would want me to go against this and, and burn them down for nerving these two gear sets. Uh, but actually, I don't think these nerves are that bad. Yeah, tacticians are going to be hard to kill and they're still going to be a, a very big part of the meta. But I don't think it is any specific gear set that makes these tactician builds so strong. I think the sole reason why tacticians are so powerful right now is because skill power can roll so absurdly high as a major attribute on, on you know, the backpack and the mask. So you can spec yourself very heavily into skill power without the need of electronics. And if you don't need electronics, then of course you can poop more into stamina. That's kind of how this build works. But I believe that once they uh, change some of the major attributes around to uh, rebalance the numbers a little bit, it won't be that strong anymore. But even if they fix the skill power, if they fix tactician so to speak, there will always be people running around with a very tanky set. I think that since toughness has been introduced and since the armor cap has been raised, everybody has been a bit more aware of their own mortality and they've noticed that all you have to do to be successful in the dark zone is not to die. So what do people do? Well, they're gonna spec more tanky. Even the highest DPS builds, they have at least two to three to 400,000 toughness. It isn't like the old times anymore where you could run around with 60k health and that would be enough. I gotta say, even when the tacticians go uh, and some new thing is, you know, part of the meta, I think that tanky players are going to stay here forever. Uh, toughness is its own stat now and it's part of the game so that everybody can see how tough they are. And I think that people are going to want to run more tanky and tanky, especially for the most difficult activities in the game. Because you have to remember, doing very little damage, that is going to make things a bit slower. But dying a few times, that's going to make progression a whole lot slower. So having a high toughness is nothing but taking the safe route if you want to go about farming and that kind of stuff. Yeah, your damage numbers might not be as spectacular and you're taking your time to kill the mobs, but at least you don't have that risk of dying. And this on a bigger skill, you'll be faster doing everything. And that's just how I see it with this game. With all the gear talk out of the way though, I want to talk about the new incursion because we finally have some footage. First up, uh, the developers have said that unlike Falcon Lost and Clear Sky, the incursion will be a lot more linear with different rooms and different phases. You aren't just fighting into one big area but are continuously moving forward. That being said, you start off in the streets of Hell's Kitchen uh, where you will go up a building using the stairs and pick up some explosives from the JTF that you will have to plan to get inside. Kinda like they did with the last mission in the game. Once you get in, you of course have to fight off the cleaners which also have their own special toys this time. Uh, and guess what? They are toy cars who, which drive at you and then explode, putting you on fire. I don't think this is actually going to be difficult with these cars. It, it seems more like just a, a fun little thing you have to be aware of. But uh, the developers have mentioned that there will also be interesting four player mechanics in the final boss room, which is something that they haven't showed on the stream and also something that I've been asking for since Falcon Lost was released. So I'm really interested to see what they brought up with this incursion. Moving on to the Dark Zone though, because I don't want to make this video too long, it has been confirmed that there will be a new Dark Zone bracket for the players that have a 231 and above gear score. In this Dark Zone there will be higher level NPCs, uh, up to level 34 and level 35 in DZO5 and 6, and according to the patch notes, these NPCs have a chance to drop gear score 268 gear set items and gear score 229 high ends. Now the underground is of course still coming in this patch, but we already know so much about it from everybody that went to E3. Uh, and the same kind of goes for the rest of the list, such as the weapon balancing and all that stuff. 
What I'm going to leave you with instead is a, a few noteworthy gameplay changes and bug fixes. There are a lot of bugs and glitches being fixed this patch, a couple of very important ones. And if you want to see the whole list, I'll leave a link down below in the description and you can check it for yourself. But before I end the video, I want to make sure that I've mentioned these because they are big. First up, Stash Eyes increased to 70 slots. Obviously, this was highly needed and I'm very happy that they pulled through with this. Also, you can convert three high-end division tech and change them into any high-end crafting material of your liking. Next up, the base of operations will have a new area called Terminal. This is of course that new area that I already talked about used to enter the underground, but it will also feature a new blueprints vendor and uh, some other stuff, such as uh, the high-value target vendors it seems. Also, very important here, you can no longer kick players out of a group during boss fights and up until one minute after the boss fight has been completed. This will stop people from kicking you after the incursion is over and everybody will get a chance to pick up their reward before, you know, nasty shit can happen. And last up the list, something that I've been wanting for a very long time, Combat Medic has been fixed. With the update, it doesn't give the user the extra 40% health anymore. And it also, and this is the good part, doesn't destroy friendly smart covers anymore, so that's a two for one. As I said, there are so many other things being changed around and being fixed with this patch, so again, there's a link in the description for everything else. This is just a summary for all the important stuff that's coming your way tomorrow. Or not, if you're on PS4. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oh man, I shouldn't joke about that, it sucks. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope it helped, and I will see you guys later, or like they say, in the Netherlands. See you later!